fellow citizens to come here and address you about some concerns. First, let me say that I have great respect for each and every one of you. You have put yourself up for public service, and that is very honorable. And with that comes great responsibility. It's hard work and often unappreciated. But it's important work. The work you do, the decisions you make, and how you conduct business dramatically and significantly affects the quality of education in our community. Intuitively, I have always known education is important. But let me put some perspective around it. 72% of our gross national product, GNP, is in human capital. I want you to just think about that for just a moment. 72% of the value of this great nation is in knowledge <clears throat> and learning. Our economic vitality and even our national security depend on the quality and success of our education system. A poor and underperforming education system means a lousy and underperforming economy. But a very good education system means a strong, vibrant economy and a great nation. That premise is what drove me to public service 20 years ago. But now as I look around, I see things changing dramatically. Once our country and our state we were leading the rest of the world, but today other countries like Japan, Korea, Singapore, and now even China are moving ahead of us in education. You know, our young people used to just simply compete across county lines and maybe occasionally across state lines for the best jobs. But today, our young people compete in a global economy. And we are losing our position as a world leader. These challenges are great. They are hard. They are difficult. And even when we are focused and united and together, they are very big, monumental challenges. But when we become divisive, when we become poisonous in our relationships and how we conduct our education business, it becomes near impossible. Trust me, these other countries are not distracted by governance issues. That's the business proposition of why everyone should care about education, regardless of if they have children in the education system. But there is a personal side to it, too. I care deeply about my community. My family goes back four generations in North Florida. I have spent my entire adult life here in Clay County. But education becomes very personal when you have children. We all, everybody wants what's best for our children. And I'm probably no different. My wife Lori and I have raised four children here in Clay County. Each one of them has attended our public schools. Three have graduated from our high schools. Two from Ridgewood, one from Fleming Island. And they received a quality education that prepared them very well for college and career. Life was good. There was harmony and there was a united spirit of cooperation and a commitment to excellence. Our biggest challenge then was funding. Clay County was 72nd out of 67 school districts in funding. We were even below the university lab schools. On funding sheets, often we had to find ourselves on the second page. Clay County was at a disadvantage to South Florida by over $1,000 per student. And that was one of the chief reasons I decided to run for office. Clay County had not had a state senator from Clay County in over 40 years. It was time for a change. We were not perfect then, but we were united. That was 1994, and soon after my election, John Thrasher became Speaker of the House. Now, finally, Clay County had some real political clout. With the united support of our local community, and more importantly, the united support of our Clay County School Board, we were successful in changing the funding formula. We were no longer last. We actually, in one year, moved all the way up to the middle, and things were getting better. People were beginning to hear about Clay County, how great the school system was. We were on the map. Things were moving in the right direction, and we were united. 
Did I say that clear enough? We were united. We came together, we put aside our differences, and we fought an epic battle against the stranglehold of South Florida, and we won. Our education system, and more importantly, our students were the big winners. We did not have public fights over nonsense. Of course, there were some disagreements. There's always going to be disagreements. Honestly, I had a disagreement, I remember, with David Owens. I can't even remember what it was about now. But we handled it politely, professionally, and privately. You see, anything is possible. Anything. No matter what the challenges are. Anything is possible if we work together. But boy, time sure had changed. Now all the talk around town is about the petty politics of the Clay County School Board. And if you don't think folks are noticing, you're not listening. From the barbershop to the grocery store to church on Sunday, folks are talking about it. Clay Countyans are concerned about it. They're disturbed by it. The, the creation of this divisiveness of the school board and the toxic environment that seems to surround it is on everybody's mind, and they're talking about it. Folks, you are close to crossing that fine line from perception to reality. At best, it's a distraction and disruptive. At its very worst, it's dysfunctional. We can do better. Honestly, we deserve better. We deserve better than what we have today. We have a unique opportunity. We have a unique opportunity, much like what existed in the 90s. We have another state senator from Clay County, the second in the last 60 years from Clay County, who is a rising star in Florida politics. We have a state representative who has the ear and the trust of leadership. And they are in an incredible position, much like what we had in the 90s, to do great things for our community, to do great things for our education system. But we are handcuffing them. They cannot help because of the relationships that exist today. These should be the best of times, not the worst of times. I implore you, I even beg you, to put aside your personal political agendas. Quiet the noise. Reduce the tone and the tenor. And work toward a strong, united cause. I don't doubt your sincerity or even your motives. But folks, we are at that proverbial fork in the road. We can take the road to the left and have more of the same, or we can take the high road to the right and achieve really great things for our community. It starts now. It starts right here with your decision on who best to unite our education community and move forward in a positive direction. I ask you to be thoughtful, to be considerate, and put the needs of our community ahead of personal goals. Together, together, together united, we can do great things for Clay County. Thank you.